going right now and we'll get started. And I would imagine we'll have some more people joining us along the way, but thank you for being here so much. Um, this is Puck Career Convo's Engineering Careers. This is our, our fifth Career Convo, our fifth week of Career Convos. And I know we've had a lot of students share that they were interested in engineering. And one of the reasons why we have that is because when we ask further, what do you like about engineering? There's a lot of crickets, a lot of quiet time of just like, it sounds cool. I, I always, I met someone that was engineer and thought about it. Um, it sounds like a great job, but they don't really know what that means. So we've got a, an expert panel on that could speak about different disciplines in engineering. Um, my name is Nicole Murphy. I have the privilege of serving Puck schools um, from the home office. I work primarily with the high school counselors and the high school leaders, but also serve other schools and just making sure students and uh, students are served with academic, personal, social, and career information. And I'd like to introduce my friend and colleague, Ms. Amy Villasenor. Amy, please share. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Amy Villasenor, and I'm the Puck Alumni Program Coordinator. Um, my work is a continuation of what we do in high school. We prep our students for success post-grad um, by exposing them to multiple pathways, offering um, all different types of supports with our college liaison program, social media efforts, and just emails and texts and things like that. So yeah, we like to support our students, not just in high school um, or middle school, but beyond as well. Excellent. Thank you, Amy. And some virtual housekeeping. I feel like everybody's pretty much a Zoom expert now, but I just like to go over it quickly. Um, when you came on, you're muted. You're welcome to unmute if you'd like to ask a question. But while our presenters are talking, please be muted um, so they don't have any background noise and no, no distractions. And we want you to ask questions. So we have Ms. Villasenor. Amy will be mining the chat. If you put something in the chat, the whole, the whole um, party will not see it just Amy will see it and myself. So we'll be, she'll be getting all the, the questions together to make sure that when we have our Q and A section or if she feels like it's timely needs to be interjected anytime during the presentation, ask questions. This is for you guys. Um, at, towards the end of the meeting, uh, again, Ms. Villasenor will share a meeting uh, webinar post, which will let you do a feedback survey. It'll help provide information on what you liked, what you didn't like, what you hope that we provide in the future, really, really important to us for you to have a, a voice in this process. And we will also share with your high school or middle school that you were here today. So you get credit for actually attending today. So with that being said, we got the housekeeping out of the way. Let's welcome our expert panelists. Again, I wanna just say all of these people have real world experience, have worked all day and have said, yes, I will come after work to speak to Puck students. So I really applaud you all for just committing your time and sharing your story with Puck school students. We've got Mr. Aguilera, industrial engineer, and I believe it's pronounced Vionier. Yeah, that's correct, Vionier. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I've got Mr. Anwa, he's aerospace engineer and adjunct professor at Lockheed Martin and LA Mission College, um, also at LA Mission College. We've got Mr. Chavez, who is a civil engineer at Kim Lee Horn and Associates. And then last but not least, we've got Mr. Uh, pardon me, Dr. Gallegos. He's chairperson of engineering and technologies department at ELAC. Thank you so much again for being here today. Now, again, like I said a little bit earlier for those that just jumped on, why the heck are we here? Why did we make this at five o'clock after a school day and get all these professionals together. Bottom line, it is for you. We put this information to empower you so that you know more about all the different options out there and that you get real world insight. It's one thing to Google something online or have your teacher tell you or your school counselor tell you this is what an engineer does or this type of engineering discipline, but to hear it from actual profession professionals that can speak to real world experience, this is invaluable by having them here and the opportunity for you to ask questions. We want you to be empowered to make more informed career decisions. So students from Puck School should graduate with a plan as to what they don't wanna do and to have a little bit more information than just doing a report on something with regards to um, their career aspirations, your career goals. So thank you all for being here and investing that time in you Puck students uh, and parents who are there who are participating today. 
when it comes to engineering disciplines, this was a learning curve for myself right here for me. Um, and looking at the many different types of engineering disciplines, we've got nuclear, chemical, system, civil, big data engineer, electrical. I know a lot of students, you, you know, when I ask them, what kind of engineer do you want to be? They say, I don't know. I just want to be an engineer. And I say, wow, that's pretty, pretty, pretty broad field. So you really want to be able to focus in a little bit more about it. So um, if you know what you want to do, great. We can ask questions about that today. If you don't know or you're not sure, terrific. You can learn more today. So let's dive in. Um, one of the most powerful parts of the story, wouldn't you say, Amy, when we've looked at the past four webinars that we've had on different industries, students love hearing people's stories. They are in middle and high school and they're trying to figure out what they want to do when they grow older. Um, starting from high school to today, if you could note a, free, a few key experiences that helped figure out what you wanted to do today and help you get to the position that you're in today. Um, I might for this first one, just go down the list. If I could have Mr. Aguilera, would you please talk about some, your story and how you got to where you are today and why industrial engineering? Sure. Uh, so I got my first computer in middle school, um, but I didn't know anything about computers. Um, so I started you know, taking things apart, putting it together, um, slowly learning about computers, uh, typing, very basic things. Um, but as the years got, as I went on into high school, I started taking computers apart, upgrading, uh, updating computers from friends. So I realized that I was good with my hands and I love technology. So that kind of drove me into uh, the sciences. I started out uh, first in computer science, but realized programming wasn't for me. Um, then I moved on to mechanical engineering and that's where I thrived the most. Seeing mechanical things, robotics, machines, who doesn't like the latest iPhone, the latest headphones, earphones, uh, you know, gadgets. And I love, I love that, um, but I wanted to explore or I would always think about how are these things made? What goes into making a gadget, a product, uh, an airplane or a boat? Um, and that kind of curiosity sparked me to kind of go into engineering and essentially into mechanical engineering. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the journey. Uh, a little, I guess a little off track. Um, I didn't always do what I wanted to do. Um, so I attended community college and that's a great way to discover uh, the different areas that you want to go into and see what what you really like and you know essentially choosing your path thank you thank you so much for sharing that um i appreciate that um let me just go down the list on the slide can i please have mr anwar share your story please yeah hi everyone so i'll just give you uh, a short story about my personal career journey so as a child i was always uh, enamored by airplanes and it just fascinated me on how they took off and landed at the local airport when I was a child watching airplanes uh, take off. And when I was in middle school, I was thinking of becoming a commercial airline pilot so that I could travel around the world and at the same time enjoy flying a machine that I was always attracted to. But when I came to the United States as an immigrant at the age of 14, I did not speak a word of English while, while in high school. And I had to uh, prepare myself for college, which I had very limited time for. And the only medium of communication to me was mathematics, which I didn't like, by the way, when I was in middle school back in the old country. But when faced with the language deficiencies uh, as an immigrant, I used math, math as a leverage to prepare for college and did very well in math. And having this keen interest in airplanes, I decided early on that I would work for the Boeing company because the name Boeing is synonymous with airplanes and that is a major uh, airplane manufacturer as most people know. So when I went to engineering school at USC, I prepared myself for a career in aerospace to align with my childhood dream of uh, doing something with airplanes. I landed a job at Rockwell International North American Aircraft uh, to work on a military aircraft. Now this was in California and Boeing was certainly not in California at the time. And I didn't quite fulfill my dream of, of, of landing a job at Boeing. Um, 
but you know, Boeing didn't have any divisions in California at the time. And I didn't want to leave California because I had family and relatives and friends that I had established relationships with here. And um, I chose to work uh, with, you know, for Rockwell. And incidentally, Boeing took over Rockwell a few years later, and I thus became, became an employee of, of the Boeing company. So I, you know, fulfilled my dream later. And I've been in the aerospace industry since I graduated college uh, over 30 years ago. And I have enjoyed every program I have worked on. And along with the great teams of engineers that I've worked with, I learned a lot from the people that I worked with and I've established good relationship uh, with the folks that I've worked with. So in brief, I have worked on, very, uh, on a number of military aircrafts, space shuttle main engine, which is a rocket engine system, missile systems, spacecrafts, uh, the most notable of which is the Orion spacecraft that will take us back to the moon someday. And that's the successor to the uh, space shuttle. It is a very exciting career. I encourage everyone to consider this. You don't have to be superb in math. I, like I said, I never liked mathematics when I was in middle school. I uh, was, and in fact, not very good at it because I just didn't put the time into it. But if you put in the time into it and study hard, uh, I'm sure you'll succeed. I have three degrees in engineering, a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, a master's in uh, civil engineering, and a, a second master's in uh, engineering mechanics, uh, all of which are applicable to aerospace industries. I enjoy the, the work that I do, and I hope that uh, some or most of you will consider this uh, same path that I took uh, for my career. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And, and I, I think it's fascinating to hear, you know, you didn't like math and engineering. A lot of people just equate, you must love it and be the most amazing mathematician to be an engineer. So very interesting. I see uh, Mr. Aguilera shaking his head too. So it's really fascinating and enlightening to hear this. I also um, can just tell so far the passion that y'all share about what you do. It's, it's really a great perspective to look at it from your lens and see, see why you love it. So thank you for sharing. Um, thank you. With that being said, I might just go down the line. Mr. Chavez, would you please share your story? Yeah, um, sure. First of all, thank you so much for putting this together. <clears throat> I think it's great to have this opportunity to uh, give kids an, uh, an, uh, a perspective on what actual engineering is. Because growing up, I didn't have anybody in my life that I knew was an engineer. I kind of stumbled upon it. Um, in high school, I took a uh, architectural design course. It was basically a drafting course. And that kind of opened my eyes into that realm of design. Um, and then I also, like Mr. Aguilera, went to junior college because like most people didn't really know what I wanted to be. Um, <clears throat> but junior college gave me that opportunity to take a intro to engineering course to kind of open my eyes into all fields of engineering. And I, I, I zeroed into civil engineering because um, during that time at my uh, junior college, they were building, they were constructing a brand new um, library. And throughout my course there, I saw it go from just bare land to a brand new library that was fully utilized while I was there. <clears throat> and that really piqued my interest. And I was like, I really wanna know what went into building this building. And it was like something that really caught my eye. So I started doing, uh, when I transferred, I, I, I went into civil engineering full on and um, learned all about civil engineering. And I graduated and uh, started out my company right, out, right after I graduated. And I've been here ever since and uh, been enjoying and loving the aspects of problem solving and working with teams and figuring out how to get buildings constructed. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's been great. And incidentally, I'm actually working on a project at Lockheed Martin in Palmdale right now, which is pretty cool that Mr. Anwar is on this as well. Very cool. I love hearing that. Thank you so much for sharing. And last but not least, Dr. Gaeo, thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you, Nicole. And thank you, Amy. Uh, man, you guys are motivating me so much. I love the energy that you both uh, emit to the students. So kudos to, to you two. Um, I got exposed to college, not to engineering, through a, an individual that reminds me of you, Nicole. Um, just so passionate for supporting the students. And that's exactly what she did. She noticed that I had the brains to succeed in math while in high school, because I was taking calculus. 
and uh, she basically completed my college application for me. I didn't do anything. Um, and so, and then I ended up touring Cal State LA. Uh, it was free. In fact, funny story. I didn't hop on back on that bus when we we're going back to school. I stay, I stood there with some other girl and I ended up just hanging out with her after, after the bus took off. Um, I knew how to get home. Uh, Roosevelt High School is just around the corner of Cal State LA. So, but I was just such a bad student with a brain though. I had AP Calculus and AP Physics. Um, but anyways, so I ended up going to Cal State LA. Um, I got exposed to this one individual, Dean Landis, Dean Raymond Landis, who's the author of Intro to Engineering book. We all, uh, Aguilé, uh, Mr. Nathali knows about that book. Um, real famous individual. He passed away a couple of years ago, but Dean Raymond Landis was instrumental in why I wanted to do engineering. He just motivated me just like you. And so somehow, some way I got stuck with civil, just like Mr. Chavez. Um, but I enjoyed everything about civil, water resources, geotech, structural, environmental, land surveying, um, so on and so forth. So I ended up just liking all the topics. I ended up focusing on water resources because my internship was with the Corps of Engineers. And so they were doing these cool simulations with uh, water programs. And um, one of them was called HEC RAS. So I ended up learning how to use that tool as an undergrad. I took the theoretical classes to understand what the computer program is doing. And then I ended up going to grad school at Colorado State to focus more on water resources. Um, the connection with Colorado State happened through a connection at, at the core. There was an individual there that graduated from Colorado State. He told me, Umberto, if you want to learn water resources, you got to go to Colorado State. And sure enough, he was right. Um, Colorado State is well known in water resources. They have their backyard is basically a hydraulic dam, a real dam where you can do some water experiments at that site. And that's where I ended up doing my research uh, in, in dam break modeling, physical modeling, by the way, it wasn't a computer simulation. Left Colorado State, finished my thesis, um, joined the core full time. And a cool thing happened when I was there, I ended up meeting my wife. She was, uh, how old was she? She was 20, I believe, and I was 25 or 26. And I, and I caught her sleep, uh, sleeping in her cubicle and it was during lunchtime. So I told her, hey, are you okay? And she woke up, yeah, I'm all right. Anyways, after that, we just couldn't stop seeing each other. So I ended up, um, marrying her. Um, I left, both her and I left the core to go work for a private company. I ended up working for Tetra Tech Environmental Construction to go work on the LA River. I'm not sure if you guys noticed, the LA River is a big old monstrous flood control channel. It's going through some um, design um, recommendations. They're trying to make it look a little bit more pretty. And so I wanted to be involved with that company that was in charge of doing that type of design. And you can find that report online if you Google LA River Revitalization Master Plan. I think Tetra Tech was given that contract to work on that, on that report. Anyways, I didn't last there too long because I loved the field so much. I ended up doing a PhD at UC Irvine under Dr. Brett Sanders' guidance. Dr. Brett Sanders, well known in numerical simulations. Um, after that, the gig was up because my wife got pregnant. So I had to finish school. Um, so I had to go find a full-time job. So I landed a job at, at East LA College. So before that, I ended up doing a little bit of GIS modeling with a small company called IEC. Um, did a little bit of land surveying with a company called LDDC so I can earn my stripes to be eligible for the license exam in land surveying. Uh, just like Mr. Chavez, I'm also um, licensed by the state of California to do some civil work, but don't ask me to size up your house. I will not, I will not do it because I won't know what the heck I'm doing. Um, but I am licensed. And so it's been a fun journey. Um, it pays well, it's fun. It sustains my family. I had so many people along the way that helped me, you know, obtain scholarship support, moral support, family support. People like you, Amy and Nicole, I've, I've met people like you along the way and just so instrumental in helping me push forward. I'm turning 45 in about two or three weeks. It feels like just yesterday I was, you know, hanging out at Cal LA and not going back on that bus back to Roosevelt High School. So it just seemed like it just happened yesterday. So happy to be here.
Thank you so much. Yes, fascinating. Always fascinating to hear about each field and what you do. Um, one thing that kids always say, so I'm a civil engineer, I'm a mechanical engineer, I'm whatever type of engineer. So what do I actually do? So I know many of you are advanced in your field where you might be at a university. So love to hear your perspective on what you do now. But what would someone do if they just graduated with a degree certificate, anything in that field? What would it look like for them? If I could maybe just do reverse order, if it's okay, and start with you again, Dr. Gaius, if you would please start off. What would it be like at the beginning when someone starts out of school? And then what do you actually do? Yeah, I would highly recommend that each of these students that has a Bachelor of Science, I'm pretty sure Mr. Chavez and the rest of the engineers can agree, is be fast to listen uh, and just work hard. You got to earn your stripes. You got to learn from the best, right? So when I used to work at Northrop Grumman, I'd intern at Northrop Grumman. Um, I interned at the Corps of Engineers. You have amazing people that have a lot of white hair that know what the heck they're doing, and you want to hang out with them. You want to... Um, earn their respect. And one way of earning their respect is by working hard, asking a lot of questions, being punctual, right? Being responsible, um, having some strong ethics, right? When it comes to doing the right thing when no one's watching. So you really wanna let them know that, you, that they can trust you. Once you do that, then they'll let you go and they'll let you manage, but you got to earn your stripes. You got to put in the time, you got to put in the overtime. Um, if you work for a public agency, there's probably no, no overtime, maybe there is, but for private companies, I know there's overtime um, automatically. And so just, you're out of school, earn your stripes, work hard, put your head down and just crank out the work and be responsible, be loyal to the company ask a bunch of questions and hang out with the people with a lot of white hair because they've been there for a while and they know what the heck they're doing. Um, once you're, what was your second part of the question, Nicole? Just paint, paint a picture for what, what would they actually be doing? Gotcha. Yeah, so at the end, um, for example, if you need to put out some work and you're tasked to meet a certain deadline, um, just make sure that it makes sense, right? So for example, when my wife, when me and my wife met and she was, also doing civil engineering work, she ended up working for a private company that paid her on a salary. So they just wanted the job done. And it didn't matter. She had to go to work on Sunday, Saturday, Friday, uh, Thursday evening, late at night, whatever it was, you know, she had to get the job done. And so just remember that people are counting on you and don't let them down. If you, if you make a promise, deliver, um, check your work. Um, know that you're dealing with people's taxpayers' money. Know that, you know, even though that check looks nice when you receive it, it, it came from somewhere. It came from people's tax paying, you know, hours. So people are putting that money for you. Just like um, uh, when I end up, now that I'm a chairperson at ELAC, you know, I work for the students. The students are actually my clients. So I got to make sure that they're in, they're Zooming with me, they're succeeding on there, available for them to succeed because the way we succeed is by their success. So they're basically my clients. So the same thing with the company. If you succeed doing some good work, if the write-up is, is, reads well, if the CAD design looks great, if you had your work checked, you produce some good products and then you'll, you'll carry that reputation along the way. You'll, that, that brand that you're putting out for let's say Tetra Tech or uh, North of Grumman or Lockheed, they're going to have that reputation that they're putting out some good work. So always think about the company. Don't think about how you sound or, or the color of your skin or where you're from. It's about that company, making sure that company looks good, making sure you put out some good work for that company and make sure you're checking your work. So it, it's, it can become a little bit stressful. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's uh, once you're in there, they're counting on you. So don't let them down. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chavez, when it comes to your work as a civil engineer, if someone's starting out and graduates, what would that first job look like? What kind of projects? What do the hours look like? Paint a picture for a student that might say, okay, I'm going to go to school and then I'll do X. Yeah, that's a, so starting off as, um, my experience at this company as a civil engineer, it was, I would echo a lot of what uh, 
Mr. Gallego said, uh, Dr. Gallego said, was a lot of hard work. So early on when I started this at this company, it's a private company, I put in a lot of uh, hours. Um, so what happens is you come in and you get on a team with different projects, right? And uh, those projects can't all be done at once. They all get broken down into simple pieces to kind of accumulate to finalize a project. So your tasks with certain tasks, either doing calculations or drafting it in a, in a CAD or, or things like that to kind of get the project moving towards the finish line. So what you what you get is you get your project managers feeding you tasks and then you kind of prioritize those tasks based on deadlines that they give you. And so you manage your time on a daily basis to try to meet those deadlines. And the way I would say is you have to view your, your project managers or your supervisors as kind of your internal clients. You wanna satisfy them to meet their deadlines on a daily basis. So that, that, that looked like for me coming in at five, six in the morning, just so I could get a, a little bit of a, a leg up on everybody else that was, you know, starting at the same time as me, just so I can get that work done. It's still leaving, you know, I don't know, six, 7 p.m. at night sometimes, but <clears throat> I felt like I had to put in the time and the effort to make sure my work was done correctly and, and make sure that my work was done right. And I, I was keeping my internal clients happy. And so that was kind of like the early part of my career. And then now, now I, I manage a team. I have my, my external clients that I get projects from. And so I, uh, my day-to-day -day is very crazy. That's one of the things I like about my, day -to my job and my career is that I never know, whenever I come into the office, I never know exactly what I'm going to be doing that day, which conversations I'm going to be having. But I do know that I have a strong team under me that I can bring projects in and, and help get these projects done. And so it looks a lot different now than it did when I first started. But I, one thing that's been consistent since my early uh, years has been the challenges never cease to, to stop. And that's what keeps me going every day. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, next on the list, Mr. Anwar. Okay, so engineering career is very different in terms of your daily activities relative to other fields of study. Uh, you get to do something different every day that's technically challenging and interesting at the same time. You'll never get bored uh, with the task you present it because you will not be doing the same thing every day, like I said. And as you discover, uh, if you decide to study engineering and work in an engineering company, every project will bring its own its own a set of challenges and you have to tackle and provide a solution for. So I find my work in extremely interesting, uh, exciting and challenging, which keeps me going. It allows for continuous le learning, uh, or in other words, uh, learning does not stop when you finish college. You'll continue to uh, develop new skills, uh, learn new software packages, uh, learn new methods uh, for doing your work and uh, be able to do your job effectively. Uh, as an engineer, you will also work with other people and therefore developing good communication skills uh, to share your, idea, your ideas with other people is of utmost importance. Uh, and by the way, you'll do quite well. Uh, you'll do quite a bit, a bit of writing as well because you'll have to generate reports for your work. And then, well, I, in fact, I once had to write a 450 page report uh, for a work that I did. And that's equivalent to a PhD thesis, believe it or not, because I put in a lot of time and a lot of effort. So writing, or should I say technical writing is a major component of your work. Uh, it's not all you know, mathematical, it's not all technical. You'll have to um, you know, uh, uh, develop the skill to be able to you know, uh, communicate your ideas effectively and be a good writer. Um, it's also, you know, communications are actually more prevalent in engineering because you're required to do presentation uh, in, front of, in front of a large audience. I myself, and I'm an introvert, I never enjoyed getting in front of people. I was always afraid, in fact, to get up in front of people to talk until I was catapulted into that role and had to do presentation in front of a large audience. I once had to do a presentation in a large auditorium in front of a 200 plus people and had to talk on a microphone. So it's something that comes with the territory and you have to prepare yourself for that, at least in the aerospace industry, that is the case. Um, 
this, re this requires a lot of preparation because you'll be uh, inevitably, inevitably be asked questions by the audience. So you'll have to prepare yourself. Um, and last but not least, I would say, um, take advantage of uh, the educational reimbursement programs that the companies offer. Um, aerospace is very big on that. They encourage folks to go back to school. In fact, I did both of my master's uh, uh, degrees um, uh, in, you know, uh, while working full-time and um, I got paid to go back to school and got paid for um, you know, purchasing my books and everything. So take advantage of that because it really helps you uh, uh, you know, stand out in, 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 your, in your group because if you have a master, it, you know, it, it carries a lot more weight. Um, it, it, it's, it's really uh, looked, up, looked at favorably in the company. Um, as far as what you do, um, you know, as a, as a person fresh out of school, as a young engineer, you probably don't know what field of engineering you want to get into. Mechanical engineering is quite vast. You'll do, uh, you know, there are areas where, where, where you'll have an opportunity to do fluid mechanics, computational fluid dynamics, uh, vibration and acoustics, uh, dynamics, uh, structural analysis, design, um, thermal analysis, aerodynamics, uh, you name it. There's just a, a, you know, a number of uh, uh, opportunities to get into in, in, in aerospace. Uh, my recommendation is to get into the industry if you're looking to get into aerospace, for example, and then you know, um, find opportunities to try something else out. And, and as, long, as long as you keep on doing that, uh, you move around, you'll get to not only know more people, but you'll get you know, a, a more experience and you'll decide on what area you want to uh, focus in and continue, continue to do your work. Um, I'm a structural analysis person, so I, uh, you know, as much as I didn't like math, I ended up doing more theoretical part of engineering in aerospace. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I deal more with math intense uh, type equations in my career. I now enjoy it, in fact. Uh, it's, it's very interesting, very exciting. Um, it it, it, it uh, brings a, a, a different level of satisfaction in that I'm able to uh, pinpoint a problem on an aircraft, for example, before anyone else knows about it. And I'm able to solve that problem to make it safe for people to get on and fly on it. And that just gives you a, a great deal of satisfaction. So as a young engineer, uh, I think you should try some, you know, try different um, uh, uh, job options that uh, the company offers you and then decide uh, what area you want to kind of focus in and, and then develop additional skills by, you know, either uh, 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 working more focused in that area as well as getting uh, advanced degrees in that particular area. Thank you. As someone who loves to fly, I appreciate you making it safer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Last but not least, Mr. Aguilera. So what will you experience uh, in your day-to-day -day starting out? Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the person that just spoke, sorry, I can't really <laughs> spell your name, but uh, you're brand new into the working world as an engineer. You don't know much, but you know you took all these classes. Uh, what, you're, what the university college is gonna teach you is how to think critically, how to approach a problem, how to problem solve, how to work in teams, how to present, all of those things that you're being exposed to every day, will, will, you, you will use it once you become a professional. But once you start out your first day at your first job, a lot of what you're gonna be exposed to is a lot of learning. Every company does work different. So it's a lot of training, uh, meeting the different departments, learning the way work gets done. In my example, I started out as a manufacturing engineer uh, for an interconnect company that makes cable harnesses for aircrafts. So learning about the materials that go into building these cables, the connectors, the, the test equipment, uh, the overall manufacturing process. So it's a lot of learning, but what school does, it teaches you that. It teaches you how to think, how to problem solve, how to um, put things together. All those kind of things is something that you will kind of go through in your first couple of days or an entry level position. Um, and like I mentioned, it depends on the, the company. Some companies want to focus on learning the way they do work. Others get to, you know, depending on your position, right to work. Um, so yeah, it just depends on the work, 
but it pretty much is a lot of learning. And like I mentioned, the good thing is that you guys are able to do it and you guys are doing it every day. So don't think that, you know, your the presentations that you're doing are, are just so the teacher can make you do work. It's actually going to help you later in the future. So a lot of these skills that you guys are learning, you'll see that they'll be repeated in different scenarios throughout your educational career and professional career as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for pointing that out and for sharing your experiences. Um, you know, some of this you, you've touched upon earlier, but when it comes to advice for students interested in pursuing an engineering career, um, what advice do you have for someone who is in middle or high school? And let me just start from the middle. How about, um, we'll start with Mr. Anwar. Um, first of all, I'd like to encourage uh, more people to go into engineering and sciences because there will be continued demand for this in, uh, field of study. As uh, technical, technical, technological developments advance, uh, so do the needs for engineers and scientists. It is a very lucrative field. Um, I think you'll make more money as a beginning, as a beginner engineer relative to other uh, majors or other fields of study. And in the long run, you will also be ahead in terms of your salaries compared to other professions. So you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna be comfortable, make it good money. Uh, engineering in college is also very much fun. Uh, it, do not be afraid of uh, mathematics and do not be discouraged by your weakness in math because you can always develop skill, skills to improve upon that. Uh, engineering classes in college um, and engineering work in an industry do not necessarily all require math intense equations. Uh, it depends on what area of engineering you want to get into and focus in and what type of your, uh, job uh, you want to do, uh, which would determine uh, the uh, level of math intensity you'll be encountering. Uh, engineering, like I said earlier, is a quite, quite a vast field. There are many branches and sub-disciplines, and even within specific engineering major like mechanical engineering. So you do not necessarily have to work in an area that's more math intense if you don't like math. Uh, but regardless, the work itself, even in a particular area like, uh, you know, like, like aerospace is very scientific and uses mathematics, the principles of mathematics to solve problems. But you'll get used to it as you take classes in engineering and as you work with, uh, uh, you know, co-workers in the industry, you'll, you know, it's, it's, it's a learning experience. It's, it, it, you know, you, you'll develop the skills to, you know, to be good at it. Um, and when you're in college, you'll take, you have to take a series of math classes to obviously become an engineer and certainly more than any other major, I would say. Uh, and that's what it takes to become an engineer, you know, just like the old adage, you know, no pain, no gain. You're not going to have uh, that gain if you don't go through the pain. Uh, but do not be afraid of math. I, I, I seriously uh, advise people not, not, not to be discouraged by that. I was, I was not too fond of math when I was in middle school. And as I uh, developed interest in, in doing engineering, I, I became very much interested in mathematics. So I, I highly encourage folks to consider that uh, in, in, in their equation. And my, rec uh, my recommendation to students or incoming students to engineering to study is to study hard, properly manage your time so that you have time for fun and also uh, you're not always stuck in the library in the evening studying for, you for, for a midterm. I never had to study the night before the midterm because I manage my time properly uh, so that I wouldn't have to spend uh, uh, you know, an all night at the library. It, it, it's possible, it's doable. If you stick to a schedule and, and, and properly manage your time, it's, it's very much doable. And I do not think that overstudying achieves any higher goals in your study plan. Uh, do well in school because most employers now look at your grades when they hire you for a job. And there are many great opportunities in community colleges, by the way. There are uh, a number of good classes at, for example, LA Mission College offers that you can take advantage of. Most of your job um, uh, uh, practices or um, uh, uh, opportunities that you'll encounter as a first job uh, would, would require you to know the fundamentals, which, uh, which is what you get at a community college level or your uh, first two years in, in college. So I would highly recommend, uh, you know, considering that as an option. You know, if you want to um, take the community college route, take advantage of the classes they offer because they're really good. They have good graphics classes that will teach you how to do drawings, and that's left, like one of the fundamental uh, 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 means of communication engineering that you have to know about. 
um, there's some good uh, 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 core classes that you can take in community colleges. And these are the fundamentals that you will need uh, for, your, for your job. Um, I also would highly recommend getting an internship or a part-time job uh, to work in the engin engineering industry, to get a flavor of what uh, practical engineering work is like. Uh, you know, I had to work 20 hours a week while going to school full-time. And in fact, I had to work full-time and work overtime on top of it while going to school to get my graduate degrees. It's very much manageable. If I was able to do it, I think most people can do it. Um, and you will also, you know, you also have to develop good interpersonal skills because you want to be able to get along with people. You want to be able to, you know, work with other teams, and that's required of you to do so in engineering. Uh, communication skills as well as interpersonal skills are key to success in engineering. And in fact, if you're very good with your communication skills, uh, there is really no ceiling in your career because you can go up to uh, climb up the uh, corporate ladder and go to an executive position and make uh, uh, quite a bit of money. And you can Google uh, you know, salaries of the CEOs for the aerospace companies and you know, get, get an idea for that. So that's uh, pretty much all I would recommend. You know, do not be discouraged by math, study engineering. It's a fun field, you'll enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, and from that, uh, again, um, Mr. Anwar is at LA Mission College. I'd like to go to Dr. Gallegos because he's at uh, East ELAC right now. So speaking from the two year to the four year um, or speaking ELAC and LA Mission College. Uh, one thing I wanna point out Puck students, if you're a middle school student, you may not know this, but our Puck high school students know this. You can take free community college classes in second semester of ninth grade through graduation, free. There's no cap on how many, as long as you're passing your core classes, you want to get a taste for engineering and take some of those drafting and um, beginner level courses, talk to your school and college counselor. You can take them for free over the summer, this spring, next fall. Don't lose out on this opportunity to get a taste of engineering before you have to commit to a major um, and also get some credits out of the way for free. So thank you for pointing that out. Dr. Gallegos, please. Oh, I was just going to echo what uh, Aman mentioned is, um, you know, community colleges is uh, a, a good way to get a head start on the STEM career. And like Nicole mentioned, it is a free program for I believe the first two years of a K-12 student to, to take these courses uh, for, for free once you enter community college. So there is some type of fee waiver for you guys and gals to to be eligible for, but again, uh, these are state taxes and these are federal taxes. So it's it might be free for you, but we're paying for it. So when you end up signing up for these courses, make sure you do well, even though it might be free. That money came from somewhere, and I want you guys to understand that eventually, what these community colleges are doing is they're helping you get a job. Once you get a job, you're going to feed taxes into this system that we call the federal government and the state government, and you're gonna feed that system taxes. So when, if you end up getting paid, let's say $100,000 a year, you're gonna end up paying about close to $30,000 in taxes. That's going back into the uh, our country. And there, it's gonna go back into a country and it's gonna provide services like the ones, a couple of the services you see at your school, the services that I see in my kids' school, uh, they're gonna pay for services for healthcare, uh, other stuff. So at the end, you can't get away from the taxes. And that's what we're trying to get you to do is get a job so you can pay taxes. Um, as far as the advice for middle school and high school students, you know, real quick, you're gonna run into some really solid good teachers and some really bad ones. It's your job to survive. It's your job to adjust and you gotta survive with the punches. You're gonna get these amazing teachers just gonna turn it around for you. You're gonna get some awful teachers really bad ones. They're in there. And your job is to survive and adjust and be able to understand how to get that A or that B. Uh, understand your environment. You know, I grew up in a gang infested area. You got to understand that joining, I'm not saying you're going to do this, but don't be joining gangs. Don't be doing drugs. Don't be riding on walls like I did when I grew up in Boyle Heights. Don't do any of that stuff. I fell prey to my environment and the environment got me really good. 
uh, serve some time in jail, hung out with the wrong crowd. Um, so just be aware of your environment. And then one of the biggest things is, man, you got to honor your teachers and your parents. Learn to honor them. You know, some I grew up with a single mom at home. Um, man, I was a pain in the butt. And so please don't give your parents a hard time. And for those that have a uh, blended families, right? Um, same thing, you know, respect your elders, especially if you come from a blended family. Uh, number four, don't be lazy. Don't be lazy, man. Don't procrastinate. If you know you have a two page essay due for English, don't wait to the last minute. Get it done because laziness is going to kick your butt. You can't be lazy at um, where Chavez is working at or Neftali or Ahmad. They'll fire you. You show any type of laziness, you're gone. You're going you're gonna to end up earning a bad reputation. Don't be lazy. Don't start now. Um, and like Nicole mentioned, 9 to 12 uh, grade students, you guys can't take community colleges now, but be, be focused because remember, you're taking classes from 8 in the morning till 3. Then you have another class from three to five or six twice a week. So it's like it never stops. So just be ready for it. Prepare your mind for that type of class. Uh, just don't sign up for it because it's free. You got to prepare your mind for that type of schedule. I think Ahmad mentioned time management. So make sure you manage your time. And then, hey, man, you got to join sports, any type of team activities. You can learn how to deal with people. You're going to end up running into people that lean to the right lean to the left, uh, that had come from different religious uh, backgrounds, different philosophies on how they treat people. You gotta learn how to deal with folks from every walks of life. And the best way to do that is by joining team activities, either a, a debate team, uh, football, basketball, whatever you can get your, your uh, hands uh, or your feet involved in doing that type of activity or not even physical activity, just maybe a debate team or something that deals with um, government. Learn how to deal with folks from different backgrounds. It will help you in the long run. God knows, once I became a chairperson, my goodness, that time I spent as the, um, and Chavez probably knows about this organization, when I was Chi Epsilon president at Cal State LA, man, that, that experience helped me a lot, how to deal with people from different backgrounds. And now I'm applying that now. What's that, Chavez, 20 years later? I'm applying some of those skill sets at ELAC and how to deal with people with bad habits. And they're in there, man. You see them all <laughs> over the news, those politicians that don't know how to treat people with respect. Uh, you learn how to treat people with respect and um, just the way you would like someone to treat you the same way. So, uh, and just have fun, enjoy the ride. Thank you so much. We, we've got 10 minutes left. So um, who'd like to go next? I, I could go. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chavez. Yeah, no problem. Uh, my my advice is I, I would echo everything that um, Dr. Gallegos and, and Mr. Uh, Anwar mentioned, but uh, also um, even in a high school, um, uh, even when you're in high school or even middle school, if you have an opportunity to to uh, shadow somebody in the industry, I would definitely say do it. Um, that will really open your eyes onto what they would do on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, if you guys ever get an opportunity to go and, and visit with somebody that's in the industry for the day or for half a day or for something, I would definitely encourage you to do that. Thank you so much. And not but, last but not least. Sure. Uh, just if you're really interested, uh, don't be scared. I think what resonates with everybody is don't be afraid of the math. Uh, don't be afraid of the sciences. Um, like Mr. Anwar, I was bad at math. I was bad at science. But here we are building interesting technologies that help the people. So, you know, if, we, if we've been able to do it, uh, you guys should be able to do it. Uh, it's just a lot of hard work, dedication, not give up. Uh, for some of you, it may take longer. For some of you, it may take less time. But, you know, everybody has different paths and different goals. But at the end of the day, uh, if you really want it, uh, you got to work hard for it. And it is rewarding. Um, I mean, who doesn't want to be part of the latest technologies that are coming out? Just really quick, uh, the company that I work for, we make cameras for cars that detect people. And if you know the you can't see it the car sees it 
it makes the car stop. So we're building these technologies for autonomous vehicles that are coming out that's going to help save lives. So think about the things that you can be involved in. Um, so all the Tesla, the SpaceX, uh, all the robotics, the you know JPL sending a robot to Mars, all of that stuff you can be part of. Um, but yeah, it's definitely going to take a lot of hard work from each and one of you. Man, it's, it's all so fascinating. I, I, it, it opens my eyes to there's not a thing that I don't either drive around in the city, use on a personal, you know, every day can't survive throughout this. And I, I'm one of the people that grew up without cell phones and computers. So, <laughs> you know, I, it's just amazing to see there's not an aspect of our life that you're not touching to make it better, safer, stronger. Um, it's inspirational. So I, I thank you all for what you do. And then on top of it, sharing your stories. Um, Miss Amy Villasenor is going to put in the chat our, our, our survey. Um, and, and what I ask is for students, if Amy, you can also share some of the questions you had, but I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to um, ask one question just to kick it off. Um, we've got engineering programs at the community college, then we've got the four year master's doctorate programs. So there are engineering careers at every level. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. And, yes. Excellent. And they're nice building blocks so you can learn and grow. Absolutely. All right. I bring that up just so that students hear, because some kids hear, oh, I have to be an engineer and go to school for like 10 years. That's not what I want to do. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. No, that's that's not everybody. Everybody's story is different. There's different paths there. So that's why I brought that question up. Great. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, so the students have been throwing questions in. Um, I just uh, the t we're getting close to time here and I want to make sure we get to as many questions as possible. So um, concise answers are appreciated. Um, so I think first and foremost, um, uh, there was a student and they uh, wanted to know a little bit about STEM class difficulty. So maybe um, like that intro to engineering, if that even exists in college, um, or um, an, any other classics could expect? Was it very difficult for you all? Or um, did you, was it really encouraging? You're like, I'm in the right spot. Maybe if maybe one person wants to answer. Sure, your intro classes, there is an intro to engineering. Um, it's very introductory, it's very basic. Uh, for my introductory to engineering, I read that Ray Landis book that teaches you what is engineering, ethics, um, and the different branches of engineering, very basic stuff. Um, but yeah, there's, there's very introductory stuff that students can learn. Um, and STEM, STEM classes are pretty challenging, but know that they're building blocks. So each class builds on the next. So you'll use knowledge from previous classes. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, once you have a solid foundation with your fundamentals, it builds on from there. Great, thank you. Um... Alrighty. Uh, I think this is more of a fun question than anything else. We have a student named Jennifer and they're interested um, on just if you guys have ever made anything interesting, like, you know, engineers, you're very hands on kind of work and things like that. Have you just, what are some of the things that you've made? They're curious. Uh, my, my, my products were mostly computer simulations, uh, technical mm -hmm. reports um publications um you know some of the stuff we did was we design and then somebody else ends up taking the construction phase of that project so you get to see it con be constructed years later or months later depending on which company you're working for so it um it's not like um it's one person does the whole thing it's there's there's they're broken up into phases but um, your part in it is critical as well. You know, pick, take some pride in your work in that technical report. I know Amon mentioned that 400 page report that he put in together. I can, I can feel his pride for that report, which is great. Um, take pride in your reports and your, in your CAD designs and your, uh, the way you manage, the way you plan and each little part of it is, is part of that big project. You know, that thing that they just landed on that planet mm -hmm. up there, that was a team effort. That was not one person. That was an amazing team effort that cost probably multi-million dollar 
amounts of taxpayers' money to get that sucker up there. So, and it probably took a while to get it designed and, and get up there. And the reason why, because they wanted to make sure it's going to work. They want to do this one time. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. Thank you so much. Um, uh, maybe anyone else make a fun robot in college or anything kind of jazzy or exciting just for the love of engineering? Uh, yeah, real quick, just uh, mm -hmm. aircraft mid-air refueling systems. I was part of uh, manufacturing a lot of those products that go into refueling an aircraft in the air. So that was pretty cool to be involved in, in actually seeing your design, seeing how it's made, and actually you know, YouTubing a video of how the system works. So that's, that's pretty awesome. cool. Wow, that's really cool. Thank you so much. Um, we have a couple students who are asking, you know, what are um, the best books on engineering? Or um, I think there was a student who even said that there was a particular thing they want to know how to do Lua scripting. So I was just wondering, um, do you guys have any favorite books or um, even like YouTubers or something where students can, you know, um, get some good information and explore, do some more learning on their own? I highly recommend that Ray Landis book. Ray what Landis is it called? Book? Yeah, I would second that. Mr. Yep. Gallegos, the Ray oh, Landis book. Yeah, what is yeah it called? Intro to Engineering by uh, Dr. Raymond Landis. Uh, you'll probably see a free PDF flowing around on the internet if you look hard. Um, if not, you guys can send me an email and I can send you that copy. Uh, uh, just let don't let them know that I sent it to you. But uh, Dr. Raymond Landis passed away a couple of years ago, and he would be happy to have you guys read his book. He was, you'll, you'll see him on YouTube as well. If you guys type in Cal State LA Solar Eagle Race 3 or something, and you'll see Dr. Raymond Landis in that video. Hey, thank you. Mr. Anwar? Yeah, that, that's a great book. I actually use that for my intro to engineering class uh, here at LA Mission College. And if you decide to take that class at LA Mission College, I do have an airplane design project uh, that you'll be doing. It's fun. Uh, it, uh, it requires uh, use of Excel. I've actually programmed it so you'll be able to uh, play around with some parameters like fuel consumption, how much fuel you want to put on the aircraft, how much fuel consumption you want to have, how many passengers you want to carry, what kind of uh, cargo, and what distance you want to travel. You'll play around with that. It'll give you an idea to think as an engineer and be able to um, uh, you know, meet the criteria for the design. So it's, it's, a, it's a fun project, but the book that um, the two gentlemen uh, recommended, I actually use it from a class and it's an excellent book that will give you uh, a, a preview of what engineering is all about. Great, thank you so much, that's awesome. Yes, and uh, anyone that completes the survey, I take these resources, I put them in an email and there's been some resources that were completed in the panelist um, registration. I put them all in one email with some other information and send it to you. So complete that survey and I'll email it to you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Aiden has a question. Aiden, if you want to have the floor. Um, I just looked up the book, Studying en Engineering. Um, which one's better, the 2019 or the 1995? <laughs> uh, is it the same author, Aiden? Um, yeah. Yes, but you can probably go with the latest one. Yeah, the 2019, I believe. Okay. There's probably some typos on the 95 one. Awesome. Great. Um, uh, I think the last question is kind of a specific, like, you know, what's the best school you see or CSU in California for engineering? Um, I'm sure there's plenty of good schools, but um, maybe if you know of any schools that have good specialties or um for particular types? Um, can I just uh, give my recommendation? Uh, sure. For a beginner engineer in aerospace, I highly recommend Cal Poly schools. Uh, they're, mm -hmm. some of the, they're the, you know, some of the best schools in California. Uh, they're not too theoretical based. They teach you the practical aspect of engineering and you'll benefit a lot uh, when you get your first job. Uh, that being said, when you want to get a master's degree at graduate school, I would uh, definitely recommend uh, schools that are more theory-based, like UCLA, UC Berkeley, Stanford, uh, because that'll, you know, the name would obviously carry some recognition as well. And, and to just echo on what Mr. Anwar said, when you have Polytech or Georgia Tech 
or any of these schools that have tech in the name, they end up being more technical schools. So not being so theory based of learning about what happens, but actually the technical aspect of it. So just note that a lot of students out there might not realize when you have tech in that name, uh, Virginia Tech, all of these schools with the technical aspect of it, um, you may want to look to. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, each, each school is going to tell you their, their, their way to persuade you to go there, right? Uh, they persuaded my wife to go to USC. Uh, I went to Cal State because it's just around the corner of my house. Um, but I think just getting educated is, is important, either at a community college or at a transfer school, even at a trade school, just get educated. Knowledge is power. If you know how to apply it correctly, some people gain the knowledge, but they just don't know how to apply it. And sometimes you need someone to guide you on how to apply that. So just get educated. Uh, you're going to have to look at your finances. But if you want to grow the best, uh, there's schools out there, like Amon mentioned, that do teach practical application engineering. There's some of them that are heavy on the theory. Some of them are heavy on some other stuff. You just have to go find them, ask questions, talk to your STEM counselors at the high schools. Uh, and find out which schools do really good at, at, at different engineering disciplines. For example, Colorado State, it's an R1 school. If you want to go to a high research intense school, look up R1 colleges and you'll get a list of all the R1 universities and colleges in the, in the nation. And you're going to see Colorado State up there, maybe top 10, top 20 school that has a lot of research money. Stamp, MIT's out there for sure. But the R1 schools is a great indicator if you want to go heavy on a certain discipline because they're, they're highly invested in that type of discipline because they have the research money to back it up. And if they have research money, most likely they probably have a way to get you funded to do some of that work. Great, thank you. Wonderful. With that being said, I'd just like to say thank you presenters. A round of applause to our amazing um, Panelists, again, your, your heart, your passion that you put towards this field and for giving your time to Puck School students, I am forever grateful. Um, thank you for being here and students, thank you for taking the time out of your busy day and your family life to invest in yourself by coming to learn more. Um, I, I think not only a lot of the information applied to the field of engineering, but just life in general. I heard a lot about relationships, being able to have the soft skills to collaborate with many people being able to tolerate people unlike yourselves, because we all have to work together and especially the projects you speak of that just take teams upon teams. Um, and then furthering your education is always going to advance you regardless of what you pick. So thank you for being here. I hope you all have a wonderful night. We're five minutes over. Sorry about that, but really good information and um, have a great evening. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you students and parents. Thank you. Adios, good luck, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. So cool. I think of Mr. Aguilera's cars. I was backing out of my driveway and didn't see a dog run out. And thankfully, my car made the beep, 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 stop thing so that I would have been horrified if something happened. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's handy. I, I know I... When I was first learning to drive, you know, learning how to reverse and parallel park was a nightmare. And then now it's standard, you know, for the cars to have uh, backup cameras and stuff. And that's just so handy now. I, um, now I just depend on it. I'm like, a car without that, why would I? Why would I even think about it? Mm -hmm. All right, we've got a couple students on right now. Anybody else have any other questions? All right, we, we're six minutes over. With that being said, I'm going to um, stop the webinar. And um, if you think of anything, just make sure you complete that survey. You can ask additional questions in there and I will send something out to you. So thank you very much for partaking. Thank you, Ms. Villasenor. And I hope you all have a great night. Join us next week for our, our uh, medical careers webinar. Hope to see you there. Awesome. All right, Nicole, thank you. Have a good night. Bye, you too.